Um, Matthew, the challenge of coming in at Colchester, roughly near the foot of League Two, was it important for you to get back into football management and were you just fighting to have the opportunity within the English Football League calendar? And was Colchester an opportunity you couldn't turn down? Um, it wasn't something I was looking at at the time. I was looking at it, if I'm being honest with you, it's from the, I accepted the role as senior PDP lead at the club, under 21 head coach. Um, and then the club obviously made the, the decision to um, relieve Gen Ben Garner of his duties as, head, as first team head coach. And um, they asked me if I wanted to take over an interim, interim role and then um, obviously eventually offered me the, the role for full term. But in, in terms of the answer to your question is no, I, I, I had experience, obviously, like you said, at Crawley and Peterborough. Um, took a lot from those experiences, but I was just happy doing a, 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 the 21 role that I'm currently in now for the time I'm being and what, what will be in the future would be um, obviously a come around a lot quicker than I thought. And I suppose, Matthew, coming in in terms of mid-season, we're nearly at Christmas time now. Obviously, that brings about certain hurdles and challenges in terms of you're fully, you have no time really to settle in the job. You have no pre-season as such. You need to achieve uh, results really straight from the off, given uh, the club's uh, predicament towards the bottom of the table. Uh, is that really to go in there already guns blazing and trying to get your philosophies or do you take some bits the previous manager had done well and is it all about refining and adding bits to that in areas you think you can approve or is it just changing the whole philosophy and mindset as a new manager coming in? I think it's hard to change a, a philosophy and mindset during the course of a season. Um, I think that has to evolve. I think it's easier if you come in at the uh, post-season when you've got a full pre-season with the players. Um, but slowly but surely, I think you've got to try and get the team to play the way you want to play. Um, but that takes time. Um, so yeah, that, that, that would be the way I think it should be done at, at this point of the season. And obviously, staying clear of injuries to key players is really important as well. Mm. And I suppose, Matthew, I looked at the sort of the squad and the sort of playing uh, numbers, and I know you probably have a few injuries, but it looks like a very much an enlarged squad. I counted something like 34 squad players. Now, I do admit there's probably some youngsters in that, and probably 10 attacking players as well. So, when you're coming into a squad that's probably enlarged, it's at that sort of and mid sort of season, would you prefer to be working with maybe 19, 20 senior players and maybe three or four youngsters uh, sprinkled around that, maybe 23, 24, is that the magic number or do in League 2 do you need in large squads? I think those 44, 34 sorry, players you mentioned, um, a lot of them would be um, from our academy and under 21 players that mm. have an opportunity and that they'd be the um, the best of those 21 group um, but yeah ideally as you said you like to work in um, smaller numbers and um, for training for example we work with, with 20 22 players um, that varies from time to time depending on what you're doing but yeah 23 24 as a squad um, supplemented as we do it with the with the under 21 is probably the way to go mm. and I suppose Matthew uh Given that you've come in with a task and a job, and I presume that task is to keep uh, Colchester in the, in the in the football league and hopefully to achieve probably safety with maybe a month to spare, so Colchester fans won't have a nervous last uh, month of the calendar. But um, in terms of maybe trying to develop the squad, I know Joe Taylor is on loan from Luton. He's had a really good time, 21 matches, sort of nine goals. Is, will it be hard to keep on to these players now that the, the window is sort of opening? Or do you really think about it's about trimming the squad rather than adding? Do you think you have a squad, a full squad there capable of achieving the task? I think if everyone's fit, the squad's more than capable. The key is to that everyone being fit. Um, in terms of the, the loan players that you mentioned, Joe Taylor, for example, um, we're addressing that at the minute. We'll we'll, we'll get to January, and um, if Joe leaves, if um, it's not definite yet, but if he does, then we'll have to address that, um, and we'll, we'll have a plan in place to address it. But um, we'll, we'll wait and see. And um, you know, the, we obviously wouldn't want to lose Joe. He's an important player to the team, but. It's ultimately not down to us, it's down to, down to Luton Town and, and Joe Taylor and his agents. So 
we'll see and in terms of recruiting anyone in um, potentially but I think um, there may be a bit of movement of just a certain type of player that will that will really really benefit the group it won't be wholesale by any stretch but um, two or three additions would help yeah, and I suppose Matthew, it's very strange in one particular insight that you would have a player, even a youngster from Arsenal's academy, uh, on loan at uh, Colchester United. But you have a young Portuguese uh, player there, Mario Bandeira. Uh, is he an exciting prospect uh, in terms of maybe uh, an agreement with Arsenal for him to co- come on loan in terms of Colchester? Because normally Arsenal, with their foreign products or foreign youngsters, that they would go overseas maybe for experience. Yeah, obviously Morris come in and had a little bit of exposure at the start of the season. Um, then he got an injury that he was out for for a number of weeks, so he went back to Arsenal and has come back to us in the last three or four weeks. Probably hasn't, hasn't got the minutes that he would want or Arsenal would want. Um, he's probably one of our stronger areas of the pitch in, in terms of midfield, um, where we do have numbers there. So it's been difficult for him to get minutes lately. Um, but yeah, obviously Arsenal think think highly of him, and um, he obviously he comes. He's got good pedigree. Arsenal, when um, they're only twenty one players, are, are always of, of a good ilk, and um, Morris the same. Yeah, and I suppose uh, can you tell us a bit about the Irish defender from an Irish angle now, Fikra Kelleher? Uh, six appearances for you this season, uh, one goal, and he's made his way up the leagues. He seems to be a guy that has maybe come from uh, the National Conference, the Conference League, and is making his way up the footballing pyramid. And uh, is that is that due to his determination and grace that he's maybe he keeps moving his way up the pyramid? I think so. His character, first and foremost, is second to none. Um, great lad especially um, off the pitch all his teammates um, really lean towards him in terms of his character and um, the way he's around the group and um, yeah, he's recently come back into the team from injury and I've uh, been a big help to everybody really um, he's a really solid performer really solid bloke and um, it's done really well in recent weeks so yeah really important mm. and I suppose uh, team is killed mm. and, yeah and I suppose, Matthew, uh, people will talk about, you hear Jorgen Klopp talking about the busy Christmas schedule and Mikel Arteta and managers in the Premier League and complaining about it and it's not fair and it's not right and player welfare. But it's important to realise uh, in terms of down the football calendar, it's the same for ye below in League 2. And uh, it's such a quick sort of quick fire sort of turnaround. There's no preparation time, no real planning in between these games. You go from straight from Salford to MK Dons, uh, then to Wimbledon, then to Gillingham, then to Swindon. And uh, you're talking about one, two, three, four, five games I make it in the space of 12 days, literally. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's really tough. Um, but that's the calendar. We've got to get on with it. Um, the players and, and the staff enjoy the games over the festive period, and I'm sure the fans do as well. So, um, yeah, in terms of preparation, don't get a lot of time in between games, but you maybe do your work beforehand and make sure you're ahead of um, ahead of the curve, so to speak. So, so you're already prepared and thinking about the next game uh, pretty quickly. So that's what we'll be doing. Um, just making sure that the players are as fresh as possible and, and ready to perform um, game after game. I suppose, Matthew, final question to me, and a question from me to you, and I suppose it's a, a bit of a personal question. You would have graced uh, the Premier League with Tottenham and West Ham and Stoke, and you would have you would have been managed by so many great managers. You would have come up against so many great, uh, seen come up against so many great managers, and seen many great managers grace the line where you were, as you as a tricky winner, were running up and down. I passed him. Did any manager during your time as a player had a rub off on you? Had a sort of an appeal to you? And did you start to think to yourself, "Yeah, I love to play under him," or "I'm delighted if I got the chance," or "I would be delighted to play under him," or "I just think there's something an aura or a charisma about this guy that um, that I would like to maybe take something that he has and instill it in my own self one day." Yeah, I think in terms of managers that I played under. Um, obviously at the start of my career I played Hoddle at Spurs who was tactically uh, um, very, very good, a real bright football mind. Um, 
I was under managers like Alan Pardew, who was really good for me in my time with West Ham, more of a man's manager. Um, tactically good as well, though, and, and Tony Pulis at Stoke, they were three very different managers, but Tony Pulis at Stoke was, was meticulous in his, in his detail, um, in his preparation, etc. So that, those are three that that I'm um, working under, I definitely took something from each, each and every one of them, and there's other managers that I was lucky enough to work under as well, obviously had good careers, had good coaching careers in the game, and in terms of right now, I think you look at the top ones that, you know, the Guardiola's and your clubs, yes, they're working with the best players, but also the way their team's playing and the way they carry themselves, whether it be in the media, um, whether it be in and around the players, they're, they're top of what they do for a reason, and they win all the trophies that they've won for a reason, so they would be the, the managers that I try and take as much from alongside others you look at Russell Martin and what he's doing at Southampton in the, in the championship um, obviously a, a British coach as well um, he's doing some good stuff and I like the way he works so yeah you try and take bits from everybody yeah, and one quick thing, final question, I suppose, in your time as a player in the Premier League, would there be an awe oh, and a fear factor when you came up against Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wagner on the sideline as opposing teams? Did you almost feel their sort of presence on the touchline? I think you did, and I think it filled throughout the team in terms of the presence. I think those Man United teams under Sir Alex had a certain presence, even under Arsene Wenger. Um, definitely had the same as well, so... Yeah, you can, and you know what you're up against, and those teams went back in the day when I was playing in the early 2000s were the top teams, and they were so hard to play against. You were, you were, um, you knew you were up against it, so you, you, you stepped foot on the on the pitch. But um, it was an unbelievable experience to go up against those kind of teams. And I made my full debut in the Premier League for Spurs at Old Trafford against Man United, and yeah, an experience that I can always, always uh, hold with me. On that note, Matthew Erickson, thanks for joining us today to give us an insight in terms of Colchester United looking ahead to a busy Christmas schedule and on hopefully to a prosperous uh, 2024 when uh, Colchester United will be climbing up uh, the league table. Best of luck against Salford City at the weekend, but for the moment, for me, Jim Conlon, to you, Matthew Erickson, stay safe, take care and God bless, sir. Thank you.